humans have always looked up at the night sky and wondered what could be up there. We have endless mythologies from every culture theorizing about beings that dwell in the sky, how they preside over us and live in worlds beyond our understanding. We are explorers by nature. Humans have always wandered over the horizon to find food, shelter, space, or to scale their curiosity. This curiosity led to innovation, cars, trains, airplanes, until finally, we found something that would take us higher and further. What paved the way to finally launch vehicles into space was the development of ballistic missiles for World War II. A gruesome start to something wonderful. It fueled a space race between the Soviet Union and America, which was then followed by space cooperation in the form of the International Space Station. 1930s to 1950s But before we got there, in the 1930s and 40s, Nazi Germany saw the capability of long-distance rockets as weapons. Realizing its use, the United States and the Soviet Union created their own missile programs. It wasn't until October 4, 1957, when we had our official launch into space. The Soviets launched Sputnik 1. This is also the year we sent up the first Earthling. Barely two years old Laika, a terrier mutt, was sent up for space exploration back when we didn't know if space flight could be lethal. 1950s to 1970s Four years later, on April 12, 1961, Russian Lieutenant Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth in Vostok 1. His flight lasted 108 minutes and Gagarin reached an altitude of 327 kilometers or 202 miles. By this time, we had developed rockets powerful enough to defy the force of gravity to reach orbital velocities. The first American satellite, Explorer 1, was sent into orbit in 1958. In 1961, Alan Shepard became the first American to fly into space. In the following year, John Glenn became the first American to orbit our planet. With every orbit we achieved, we gained more and more perspective about space travel and started turning our sights to the moon. Landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth within a decade was one of the first national goals President Kennedy had set in 1961. And eight years later, in 1969, Neil Armstrong took one giant leap for mankind as he stepped on the moon. But before this historic moment, unmanned ships photographed the surface and probed the moon before the astronauts ever landed there. By the early 1970s, orbiting communications and navigation satellites were in everyday use. The Mariner spacecraft was orbiting and mapping the surface of Mars. By the end of the decade, the Voyager spacecraft has sent back detailed images of Jupiter and Saturn, their rings and their moons. Skylab, America's first space station, was the highlight of the 70s, as was the Apollo Soyuz project, which was the world's first space mission crewed by an American and a Russian. In the following decade, space missions started to impact the daily lives of everyday people on Earth. Satellite communications expanded to carry television programs, and people could pick up the satellite signals on their home dish antennas. These missions also taught us hard lessons about our planet. Satellites discovered an ozone hole over Antarctica, pinpointed forest fires, and gave us photographs of the nuclear power plant disaster at Chernobyl in 1986 and astronomical satellites found new stars and gave us a new perspective of the center of our galaxy. It was the age of information about everything concerning our planet and our galaxy. 1980s The 80s saw a rise in shuttles. We had the first reusable crewed orbital spacecraft launch in 1981 from NASA, followed by a probe to Venus, where we collected soil samples and recorded sounds from another planet. In 1986, we had our first Uranus flyby on the Voyager 2. The probe was 81,500 kilometers, or about 51,000 miles away. This is also the year we attempted to launch a civilian into space. Sadly, the mission went sideways. The launch of the Columbia Space Shuttle in 1981 ushered in a new era of reliance on reusable shuttles for space missions. 24 such shuttles were launched successfully. The 25th, however, exploded just 73 seconds after let-off. When Challenger exploded, it killed a crew of seven, including Krista McAuliffe, a teacher from New Hampshire 
who would have been the first civilian to go to space. In 1986, we also got a closer look at Halley's Comet, a comet that comes around Earth every 75 to 76 years. Three years later, we pulled off a Neptune flyby at a distance of 29,240 kilometers or 18,168 miles. 1990s When the 90s came around, we had a family portrait. The family portrait is an image of our solar system as seen by Voyager 1 from a distance of 6 billion kilometers or 3.7 billion miles. It features individual frames of six planets and a partial background indicating their relative positions. The picture is a mosaic of 60 individual frames. The 90s was also the very first time we confirmed the sightening of a planet outside our solar system. It was actually two rocky planets orbiting PSR B1257 plus 12, a pulsar in the Virgo constellation. Located 1170 light years from Earth, the planets are two and a half times the size of Jupiter and take over 100 Earth years to complete an orbit. In 1995, we completed the first orbit of Jupiter as part of the Galileo mission. We even ventured into the atmosphere of the gas giant. The probe was 120 kilometers or 74 miles in when the atmospheric pressure destroyed it. It was the furthest point on Jupiter any craft has reached. In 1997, we launched the Mars Pathfinder, making it the first operational rover on another planet. And in 1998, we had the very first multinational space station and the largest artificial object built in space to date. 2000s The International Space Station is a research laboratory on low Earth orbit. With many different partners contributing to its design and construction, this space laboratory has become a symbol of cooperation in space exploration. Where once the Soviet Union and the United States were in a space war, today they work together for the common cause. This station has been continuously occupied since the arrival of Expedition 1 in November of 2000. The station is serviced by various visiting spacecraft, the Russian Soyuz in progress, the American Dragon and Cygnus, the Japanese H-2 transfer vehicle, and formerly, Space Shuttle and the European Automated Transfer Vehicle. Most recently, the Dragon capsule from Elon Musk's SpaceX docked the International Space Station as well. This lab has been visited by astronauts, cosmonauts, and space tourists from 17 different nations so far. The Future While most of NASA's programs have ended, private companies are readying their own space programs. Planetary Resources plans to send robot astronauts to the asteroid belt to mine for precious metals. SpaceX hopes to land a million civilians on Mars to start a colony on another planet. AI Factory has already designed homes to be built on the surface of Mars. We're looking at exoplanets that could potentially support life and have already found two dozen that would be an even better habitat than planet Earth. There is no limit to what our curiosity can achieve. But as we discover newer galaxies and move to newer planets, it's essential to keep in mind where we started, with a two-year-old terrier named Laika. Like